Today is Christ is King Sunday. And our sermonic text comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, beginning at verse 33. But before we read, <laughs> yeah, Bible check, Bible check, Bible check. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We encourage you to bring your Bibles to the house of the Lord, especially in these corporate settings. All right, my friends, please listen and read along. John chapter 18, beginning at verse 33. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Amen. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. For all you've done, Lord, we say thank you. And for this time, we say thank you as well. So right now, make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more and fix us by clearing our minds, opening our hearts and unstopping our ears so we can hear from you and upon hearing from you. We want to leave this place better than the way we arrived. Yes, Lord, we want to walk out of here better than the way we walked in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you would please turn to a neighbor, look at them good, and repeat after me. Friend, today's sermon is Kings and Kingdoms. Amen. As mentioned, today is Christ is King Sunday, which is a reminder to the world of what we already believe, that Jesus is the King of Kings and the ruler of the universe. Amen? Amen. Amen. He is a king, but not according to what the world is accustomed to. So it is now as it was also during the time of our text. You see, Pilate was the Roman governor responsible for order in Judea. Jesus was causing a disturbance in the region. Now, although this disturbance did not incite any riots or destructive behavior, it did expose the truth about authority. It exposed the truth about love, about community, about acceptance, and true salvation, to name a few. The truth about authority is what gained Pilate's attention. Now, Pilate knows what a king is. Pilate has a king. That king's title is not king, but Caesar. The emperor of Rome was known as a Caesar. And this one during this particular time was Tiberius Caesar. Pilate understood what a kingdom was. Judea was a Roman province. It's a part of the Roman Empire. It's a part of the Roman 
kingdom. And for Pilate, the Jews already had a king who could not be called, could not take the title king because of Roman rule. So the kings of Judea, they were known as Herods. And the Herod in charge at this particular time was Herod Antipas. Herod, however, Herod Antipas, how do I, he, he was ditzy. <laughs> yeah. He was ditzy. Uh, he wasn't fully there. He really wasn't. And he could not quite understand what Jesus was doing. Didn't understand the threat, if you will, that many believed Jesus was. But Pilate, <laughs> Pilate was different. Very different. Now, I want you to understand that John's gospel is the only gospel that actually has a conversation between Jesus and Pilate. One of the reasons we can find is in verse 37, which we'll get to in just a few moments. The intent of John's gospel is to help us see and understand and to receive the fact that Jesus is fully God, fully divine. The synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, their focus was on the humanity of Jesus, Jesus being fully human. But John's gospel, it's on Jesus being fully divine. And unlike the other gospels here, Jesus readily speaks with Pilate. In the other gospels, Jesus is primarily quiet throughout his trials and throughout his time with Pilate. But in John's gospel, yeah, Jesus got something to say. And he says it boldly, strongly. And as the conversation unfolds here in our text, it's easy to see that Pilate does not want to be made a fool. Pilate does not want his time to be trifled with, but he also begins to see that Jesus is innocent but does very little about it. Now, we need not be surprised by this. <clears throat> we shouldn't be shocked by this. Think about where we are and who we are in this particular day and age within the past 15, 20, 30 years. How many times? Have we seen a person convicted for crimes that they didn't commit only to have DNA evidence brought forward or to have eyewitnesses come forward with testimonies that have proven the falsely convicted as innocent? And then, as the stories continue to unfold, we discover that their innocence was known all along by some individuals, by law officers or law practitioners or persons who finally caved under the weight of their guilty consciences. Pilate, Pilate would come to know that Jesus was innocent but would not do enough to stop his crucifixion. You see, Pilate's initial aim, my friends, is to establish who Jesus is. Is he a king or not? Jesus would come to say, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. Pilate learns that Jesus believes that he is a king who has a kingdom. But Pilate
Pilate misunderstands the type of king he is. <laughs> Pilate misunderstands the type of kingdom he lords over. You see, Pilate would not have been able to find Jesus' kingdom geographically, for there's not a map large enough nor detailed enough to find it. Maps, as we know, they show us geographical lines and regions. Maps, as we know, show us roads and highways. They give us the compass roads, which shows us what direction we should head in. Maps, as we know them, provide land masses. And they tell us about bodies of water. But the maps we know don't show us how to change our hearts. And without a change of heart, you can't find the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Pilate had seen kings captured and shackled. He'd seen that happen before. But what he was used to seeing were kings begging for their lives, scared to death. But not this king, not Jesus. You see, Jesus says, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason, I was born. And for this reason, I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Pilate couldn't understand this. And rightfully so, he couldn't understand this. You see, the same change of heart that shows you the Lord's kingdom is the same change of heart that also reveals the kingdom's king. And those on his side listen to him because this king is also known as the truth the truth well this is a good spot to stop amen mm -hmm. this is where the lesson ends for Pilate this is where the lesson ends for you and for me as well, because Christ's kingdom is one that reflects him. It's not a place, but a truth that also reflects the ways of Christ and the teachings of Christ. Oh, you got to get this. You see, there are no social hierarchies in this kingdom. There are no abuse and prejudices in this kingdom. There are no isms here. There are no phobias here. And there's no class discrimination in his kingdom. You see, if you are a citizen of the Lord's kingdom, you know the truth. And the truth is that Jesus laid his life down for all of us. Each and every one of us. Even those who are not a part of his kingdom. Jesus died for them too. Jesus died for us all. But the hope is, the hope is that all will come to know him as the Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. All will come to know him as the bright and morning star. My daddy used to say when he was preaching, all would come to know him as bread when we're hungry. And water, when we're thirsty, all will come to know him as the healer of our souls. All will come to know him as the ancient of days, the sweet rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. All will come to know him as Lord of Lords. And King of Kings, because... That's who he is. He's a king. The king of all kings who rules his kingdom with love. Lord.
puts his kingdom by love. So in the name of our king, be blessed today. Amen.